Good afternoon, I'm Sean Yao, and this is One News Now. President Duterte has ordered Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara to form a task force that will investigate the alleged anomalies within PhilHealth. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque said the task force is authorized to issue preventive suspensions on officials being investigated for corruption allegations in the agency. On the other hand, Guevara said he has received the president's memo and he will form a high-level task force immediately. PhilHealth is in hot water after former officer Thorson Keith claimed that a so-called mafia in the agency pocketed some 15 billion pesos in funds. Ang mensahe po sa mga buwaya ng PhilHealth, tapos na po ang maliligayang araw niyo dyan. Goodbye. And the Philippines is now considered the epicenter of the COVID-19 in Southeast Asia with over 119,000 cases. However, Health Secretary Francisco Duque says it's unfair to compare the Philippines to its Southeast Asia neighbors. News 5's Greg Gregorio joins us live from Marikina to tell us more about this. Greg, what's going on? Why is Secretary Duque saying that it's unfair? Yes, on uh, Health Secretary Francisco, Francisco Duque III explained that we should consider the country's total number of population before saying or claiming that we're doing poorly in COVID-19 response. And he also added that it is normal to see the numbers go up since the government has implemented several measures to detect and isolate people with the SARS-CoV-2 virus. The Philippines has surpassed Indonesia and Singapore yesterday as country with the highest number of COVID-19 cases in Southeast Asia. The country has over 119,000 cases, while Indonesia has more than 118,000 and Singapore has around 54,000 cases. But Duque insisted one must look at the country's population. He explained that Singapore has more than 54,000 cases out of 5.9 million population as compared to our 119 cases from 109 million population. The health secretary also maintained that our current situation was not caused by failure of response, but due to several measures such as increased testing capacity and robust contact tracing. The interagency task force on emerging diseases, which Duke heads, continues with its visitation of LGUs to check on their response. This morning, Duque visited Marikina. According to Marikina Mayor Marcelino Teodoro, they are able to trace 30 individuals per one case on an average basis. He also boasted their own molecular and diagnostic laboratory, which has up to 800 daily testing capacity. Duque commended the local government's efforts, particularly its contact tracing. Here's what the secretary has to say. That's unfair for them to say that. These are contact tracing. So you, you really see that. Indonesia testing rate is three times less than the Philippines. We're, we're testing more now. Sona Marikina currently has 878 confirmed COVID-19 cases, but out of uh, but of which only 381 are active cases. Meanwhile, Secretary Duque said that their efforts on uh, uh, contact tracing, testing, isolation, and treatment are all part of the government's end goal in flattening the curve in the country. Juan? Greg, thank you for that update. News 5's Greg Gregorio joining us from Marikina. And here are other stories we're keeping our eyes on. Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Boy Luxin and U.S. State Secretary Mike Pompeo recently discussed Washington's latest policy shift in the South China Sea. Aside from strengthening the maritime cooperation between the Philippines and the U.S., the top diplomats also talked about Washington's support for Southeast Asian countries and upholding their sovereign right. Pompeo made the phone call one day after President Duterte barred the Philippine Navy from joining the naval exercises with other Southeast Asian countries. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año personally tested motorcycle barriers donated by ride-hailing app Ancas this morning. He also slammed motorcycle riders opposing the use of physical barriers, saying they are not pandemic experts. And the U.S. bids goodbye to popular apps TikTok and WeChat. 
President Donald Trump signed a pair of executive orders prohibiting U.S. residents from using Chinese-owned apps after 45 days. According to Trump, these apps may be a national security risk. For more updates, follow News 5, the Philippine Star, and Business World online. Visit our website, onenews.ph, for more in-depth analysis. You can also catch One News on the Signal Play app. Register for a free account now at www.signalplay.com and stream One News live anytime, anywhere. I'm Sean Yao. We are One News.